Here on the south coast of the UK, the talk of the town for the last two seasons has been the Cape 31 class. A big hit at Cows Week last year, the class has grown rapidly both at home and abroad. And 2023 looks set to get even bigger with a Solent series of six events. Round one of the UK Cape 31 season took place here in the Solent. It was part of the Royal Ocean Racing Club's Vice Admirals Cup. The Cape 31s were the biggest class here. What a way to start the season. It was a three day event and whilst the big fleet turned up, the weather didn't, unfortunately. There was a little bit of breeze, but really not enough. They had three starts, but actually had to abandon uh, the only race that looked like it was gonna get finished due to the lack of breeze and a great big shift. Bit of a shame for the opening day, but day two, was a very different matter indeed. 15 to 20 knots, a forecast that suggested it was going to last all day. What's not to like? So, race one, 15 to 18 knots of breeze, 25 boats, modest length line. What could possibly go wrong? And the answer, nothing. Miraculously, a clean start for the first race. The first beat saw the fleet split completely across the course, using the full width of the race course. By the time they got to the top, it was Gellert and Katabadik and Tokolos that went round in one, two, three. And it was those three boats that fought it out pretty much for the next three laps. By the finish, having lost their lead a couple of times, Gellert took the lead with Tokolos second and Katabatic third. For race two, the breeze had dropped just slightly down to about 12 to 14 knots, but the tide had increased and it was now running west right across the race course, making the first leg quite a tactical affair. And when it came to the start, whilst it was almost a clean affair, there was one boat OCS, the previous race winner, Geller. The popular tactic on the first beat seemed to be to get into the tide as quickly as possible, and that meant going left on the beat. The trouble was, by the time they got to the windward mark or on the approach to the windward gate, it looked like quite a few people had overcooked it and had overstood coming in on port. That was going to make for a very messy mark rounding. As it turned out for the top three, Antix, Motion and Fargo, they squeezed around pretty much cleanly. It wasn't too difficult, but just behind them, the pack that followed had a bit of a battle getting around the top mark. It wasn't helped by the fact that there were gusts rolling off the shore as well. So just as they were hoisting kites, gusts were coming down and putting a lot more pressure on the helm. As the fleet worked its way up the second beat, things started to get really quite tricky. The cumulus clouds behind us were building on the mainland shore as the thermals started to develop. The trouble was in the northerly gradient breeze, the thermals were drifting out over the Solent and then dropping air over the race course, which was causing some big shifts and some holes in the breeze as well, as well as suppressing the gradient breeze that had been there all along. It was a tricky old mark rounding, but the boat that got it right was Motions, the Dutch boat, that managed to find their way through all of that upwind shenanigans, rounded the mark and stretched their lead. Further back in the fleet, the conditions really opened up the racing as teams tried to thread their way down the sort of fingers of breeze or the stronger breeze on this downwind leg. By the bottom of the downwind leg and the finish, the Dutch had actually pulled out a lead of several minutes over second place Tokolos and Katabatic in third. Yeah, we, we just keep on, we kept on winning and, and gaining more distance on the rest. We were close to uh, Tokolos uh, at the open mark, last open mark. Uh, but from there on, we um, well, we were just in a good lane, I think. Excellent. Now, how's the conditions out there? It looks like there's some pretty fresh and fun rides downwind as well. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's really up and down. Uh, the wind goes from uh, something like 8 knots to uh, 18 knots. Uh, to get, also with the direction. It's, um, it's, it's a tricky one, but uh, sometimes you gain on that as well. When it came to points after two races, it was already close at the top with Tokolosh and Katabatic on equal points. 
Race three, the final race of the day, looks set to be the trickiest of them all. By now, the tide was hosing out to the west, right across the course. Meanwhile, up on the shore, the cumulus clouds had spread out and of course a whole load of shade over the ground, which had killed off quite a lot of the thermal activity. And that had meant that the gradient breeze had come up a little bit. But even that was about to change. As we look further inland, you can see blue patches uh, appearing in the sky as the, uh, as the thermals cycled. And it looked like it was going to be anything but settled for the final race. Within a couple of minutes of the start, in fact, all that really mattered was whether you were left or right, because a big, big right-hand shift meant that those from the middle of the fleet out to the right could actually lay the windward mark, and those to the left couldn't. It looked set to split the fleet completely. Fortunately, well, at least for those on the left, the breeze actually went left, which redressed the balance as they got halfway up the first beat. The second half of that first upwind leg proved to be just as tricky as the breeze switched from side to side. In fact, the downwind leg didn't prove any easier either. Shotgun were first around the top mark, but by the bottom, they rounded in fifth. The front runners had reversed in order. And when it came to getting through the bottom gate for the bulk of the pack, the tide was causing chaos as the fleet got swept out towards the west forcing everybody to come in on a very tight port lay. On the second lap, it just got harder and harder as the breeze got a little bit more shifty and a little bit more puffy. The clouds influencing the breeze that they spilled over the race course. But as is so often the case in these conditions, the leaders seem to have it all their own way. In clear air, they could pick their route up the beat, working the shifts to their benefit. But for those buried in the fleet, things were not so straightforward. Trying to find a route up that beat that didn't have dirty air proved very difficult indeed. The net result, the front runners just extended further ahead. But it wasn't all over because there was still a tricky downwind leg to negotiate. The earlier consensus suggested that going left on the downwind leg was the answer. That certainly proved to be the case by the time the fleet got to the bottom. But on the second downwind leg, it wasn't so straightforward. Shotgun decided to take a flyer and go right. Seeing some breeze under a darker cloud, they certainly seemed to have actually pulled themselves back up into the running. In the end, it was a gamble that cost them a place, dropping them from third to fourth. Meanwhile, winners in that race, Arabella and Chaotic, first and second, Antics third, Shotgun fourth, Jubilee fifth. Um, James, well, what a way to start the event. You win the first race. Yeah, we did. We had a great first race. Um, got off the line okay, good boat speed, caught a few shifts right, and it was crucial all day. You know, the breeze was shifting through 20 and 30 degrees and up and down. I've um, got a great tactician with Elliot Hansen and a really good team. So um, they were on top of that. Second and third one, not quite so good. We got a bit sticky, but um, yeah, still, you know, happy to come out with a decent sort of series of results and plenty of racing still left to do tomorrow. So yeah, great time. The Cape class was fantastic. I think that's what everyone's been looking for. 25 boats, 15 knots of breeze and flat water. You know, couldn't get any better. Back at base at Hamble Yacht Services, where the music, Mount Gay and burgers were in full flow, no one was short on the view. First impressions of the boat? Do, do you know what? The boats have really surprised me. They're actually really, they're really nice boat. When you compare them to a kind of J70 or something like that, they're, they're a big step up. And today was fun where it was kind of that condition where you could get it up and get it send, and send it downwind. And then there's times when that wasn't the mode. But um, also with the drop lines and the and the proper runners and um, yeah and having a proper jib track and an up down system and yeah it's all um, it all feels like a big boat but very manageable with um, and actually the three professionals on board can can do a lot of it but you need the other guys on board to be um, up to scratch as well so it's a, it's a really nice balance between. Yeah, the kind of TP world and the J70 world, and actually it's uh, it's a great boat. Ooh, tips to a new team starting out. I mean, I think um, I think that because the class is still new, you know, there's there's not. I wouldn't say there's a huge pecking order yet. So anyone that's joined the class, like 
not to feel like they are inferior to anyone else. You know, this is a really welcoming bunch of people, um, and uh, and it's anyone's game. You know, and I think that one of the cool things about it is even going down the final run. If you're if you're not doing that well in the race, there's still a lot of madness that can happen in front of you, and and good results can come of it. So. I hope the people are having just as much fun through the fleet, through the fleet from front to back. But, but yeah, I think um, I think that would be what I'd say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> day three kicked off looking much the same as day two, with the breeze still from the north, albeit a little lighter, and the forecast for thermal activity over the land. Another tricky day was in store. The scoreboard echo this too. After three races, Nard Dowling's Arabella was leading, just two points ahead of Mike Bartholomew's Tokarosh and Michael Wilson's Shogun. While Anthony O'Leary's Antics was just one point behind them. But in reality, when we got out here, things looked remarkably similar to the day before. White horses across the course, but it did still have that feel of a slightly less breeze. In fact, on closer inspection, what seemed to be the case was that the tide was still going east, pepping up that sea state. So whilst the breeze was down a little bit, it was still just as tactically demanding as it had been the previous day. The first beat was going to be crucial. Starting at the pin end seemed favoured, but it was a crowded end of the line to be at. Those, meanwhile, at the committee boat end had the opportunity to tack away onto port and get into clean air very quickly indeed. So while there were plenty of shifts and puffs to play in the first race of the day on Sunday, the defining moment actually came on the first downwind leg when the breeze filled in on the left-hand side of the course, accelerating those that had chosen to go down that route and giving them a leap on the rest of the fleet. From there on in, it was very difficult to extract yourself from the middle of the pack, whilst the leaders just ran away with it. And the two that stood out in this race was Gellert, who took the win, and Shotgun in second. Yeah, managed to get off the start line, found a really good lane on port, and from there, controlled it. Still big shifts, pretty tricky. Um, yeah, we got pushed hard by every boat. It's um, still tight racing, great fun. Fantastic conditions, so yeah, all good. So the boat looks to be going pretty fast downwind though. You guys had a good uh, good steal on the fleet in the end there and extended. Um, there's such difference in pressure that when you get a squirt, if you get an extra five or six knots gust, then you can put the bow down 10 degrees and accelerate. You know, you, we came around that top one in pressure, but the ones before just felt like, you know, we weren't, we were getting pushed, but yeah, a bit of breeze makes a big difference to these things. For race five, the breeze had dropped and the tide had switched to the west, which meant that any of the lessons learnt on the racetrack in the previous race were now largely irrelevant. After the first general recall of the weekend, the fleet got away on the second attempt. And it was the middle of the fleet that seemed to do best on the first part of this upwind leg, in particular Bertie Bickett's Fargo, that stole a march on the entire fleet, going up the leg to round with a clear advantage Behind them, the bulk of the fleet were approaching the windward mark on port. It was going to be an absolute scrum getting around that top mark, as indeed it was. But in this fleet and today, not even a big lead counts for anything, because by the bottom leg, Nifty had taken the lead, followed by Shotgun, and Fargo lost all of her big advantage and forced to round in third. And then, just to mix things up big time, a great big left-hand shift, two-thirds of the way up, the second beat, caught a lot of those who were on the left-hand side of the course out. They ended up having to crack sheets and reach into the windward mark. The, the pecking order had been reshuffled again. And the fun wasn't over yet, because although Jubilee rounded the windward mark in the lead with a, quite a comfortable lead, one of the worst things you can see in that position is to look back and see the bulk of the fleet carrying a nice big puff down the middle of the course, which is exactly what happened. With those in the middle of the pack sailing lower and faster, the pressure was really on for the front runners. At this stage, the running order read Jubilee, Shotgun, Giraffe, Chaos and Geller. But would it remain? 
So obviously a pretty uh, tactical one in there, but you guys managed to pick up those shifts in that last upwind. Absolutely, and it was the shifts that did it for us. Uh, we just managed to squeeze out ahead uh, at the top mark on the final round, and, and then a, a nice clean run back down again. And we were there. We're really, really close racing. Those top marks are really, really hard work. There's a lot of boats all coming in at the same time, so it's good fun. Going into the final race of the day, it was Shotgun that was leading the points board. Was it enough to lift the trophy? No one was really quite sure. What they were sure about was that you couldn't take anything for granted. The last race had proved that. But there was also some clear indications that this final race was probably going to be one of the trickiest ones the whole weekend. The thermal streets, a cumulus cloud just up there, had been developing all through the morning and all through lunchtime and had formed into streets, lines of cumulus cloud indicating a line of thermal activity that looks set to dump onto the course during the course of the race. That was going to throw things around and even at the start it was quite clear that there were some big shifts. This was not going to be easy. As it turned out the breeze actually settled down a little bit as the start gun went but the tide was still pushing to the west compressing the fleet up against the pin end and the boat that came off worse shotgun who was forced to bail out, jive around and try and thread their way on port tack through the entire fleet. For anyone looking for a bit of consistency in the final race, they were going to be rather disappointed because a big left hand shift turned the fleet inside out by the time they got to the windward mark. It was Flerg who rounded the mark in first, shotgun managed to do pretty well and rounded in fifth after her difficult start and Geller was in seventh. By the last top mark of this race the really impressive performance was by Shotgun who'd muscled their way back up into the lead. But more was to come because on the downwind leg Gellert who'd also done very well on that last beat took a flyer out towards the east right off on their own jived across and when the two came back together it was Gellert that had taken the lead with just a few hundred meters to go to the finish. Chaotic finished second and Shotgun took third. But was it enough for the overall trophy? The answer was even they didn't know, at least not until they hit the shore and by then the round one Cape 31 trophy was theirs. And that was pretty tricky, wasn't it? That was a full-on weekend. It was very intense, yes. <laughs> I was looking forward to seeing some video footage because I've not seen much of the racing this weekend. I've just been told to concentrate. You don't want to see it. It'll just raise your heart rate all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're probably right. It was, I mean, how hard was it though? It was, you know, paint a picture for us. What was the weekend like? Um, well, it's made a lot easier by the team that you've got around you. Um, and if the team put you in good places, um, then uh, that makes a massive difference. Um, but yeah, we've done some, done some training and it's our second season with the boat and uh, it's, it's making a difference. That last race in particular, I think, was the most impressive because you had to bail out of the pin end and then come out the other side. And yet you managed to grind your way up to the front. How hard was it? How did you do it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, first off, we, had, it, we knew it was an option. So we'd actually discussed that that might have to happen. Um, so I think that was very useful that we, we all knew in our heads that that could be what we did at the start. Yeah, and the, the wind shifts were massive out there. You know, sometimes 50 degree wind shifts and there was always opportunities to get back back to the pack. And um, yeah, again, pro probably hats off. I mean, me and Mike try and keep the boat going fast and, and the tactician did a really good job of getting back in sync and, and really getting us in the mix by the win with Mark. So you're going to be at round two? We're going to be at round two, yep. The bar's been set rather high by yourself now? Yes, that's... Uh, <laughs> we did this last year, actually. We won the first <laughs> event last year and then it kind of slipped backwards. So uh, let's try and uh, learn from last year and, uh, and keep it going. Well, well done once again. It was a very impressive performance and good luck for the next one. Thank you very much, Matt. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Next stop, round two for the National Championships at the Royal Lymington Yacht Club on the 9th to the 11th of June.